I'd like to call the uh, meeting to order the district of the Chat uh, district of Chatwin at uh, 4:30. Uh, right now, I'd like to have the opening statement read, please. As we gather today on the traditional territory of the Treaty Eight Nations to conduct the business of the district of Chatwin, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community, and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interest. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, prior to adoption of the agenda, I'd just like to thank everybody that's uh, attended. It's uh, good to see uh, faces again in our chambers. And uh, you're always welcome uh, to join us whenever This meeting is being recorded. Thank you. Uh, so adoption of the agenda. Any new business prior to adoption of the agenda? Not hearing any. Adoption of the agenda, please. Moved by Councillor Deck, seconded by Councillor Bazandowski. All those in favor? Carried. Minutes of the regular council meeting held on June 6, 2022. Delegations and presentations. We have uh, some certificate, certificates to give to our volunteer fire department firefighters. So, uh, for the first one, I will I will be calling upon Christopher Lorette. And for the second presentation, we will be calling up Jordan Walker. These are the best. These are the best things we do as a council and mayor is to honor the safe things that we do in Chapman, and this is, these are the big parts of how we keep ourselves safe in Chapman. And uh, Jordan, thank you very much for this. This is uh, quite an honor for us to be giving you the certificate that you've earned. So thank you very much. It's the NFPA 1001 Firefighters Level 1 and 2. Thank you very much for that. It's quite, quite an honor. Yep.
Okay, the, okay, the second delegation, uh, prior to that, thanks once again, gentlemen. Did they already leave? Did they get a, they, did they get a call? No. I hope not, that's good, perfect. Uh, just like to thank them uh, personally that uh, I know every, I know a few uh, counselors that uh, have firefighters in their family, so uh, thanks, thank them very much. And uh, every once in a while, give them a hug as they leave uh, for their jobs because it's a very important job that they do. Thank you very much uh, for, to the fire department and volunteers and to our chiefs. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we'll get on to uh, Alan Bone, Saunders, Rose Bone, Grindle, LLP, uh, the 2021 financial statement. Well, I'd like to uh, say thank you for inviting me to, to present. Um, I'm nowhere near as exciting as that. Uh, we, 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 uh, but we do get to uh, do a very important job and help uh, Mayor and Council uh, uh, complete their, their, fulfill their duties. So I'm here on behalf of my firm, uh, Santa Rose Bone Grindle. Uh, I've been the partner on, on your file now for um, a number of years. Uh, and before that, I was a student, so I'm very familiar with your community and, and have been involved and, and uh, very fortunate that I've, got, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, all the staff and, and, and council uh, over the years. So I'm here to present the auditor's report. Uh, I'm not going to read it in word for word because I don't want to bore you, but I unfortunately do have to go through a lot of it. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to just read from page um, two of the financial statements. I think it's two. Uh, we have audited the financial statements of the District of Chetwin, which comprise the statement of, of financial position as at December 31st, 2021, the statement of operations, the statement of cash flows, and the change in net assets for the year then ended. In our opinion, except for the possible effects of matters described in the basis of qualification, qualified opinions, section of our report, the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the District of Chetwin as at December 31st, 2021. The, dis the basis for the qualified opinion, the District has not adopted the section, section PS 3260, Liability for Contaminated Sites of the Public Sector Accounting Board Handbook, which establishes how to account for and report a liability associated with remediation of contaminated sites. The effect on the financial statements as a result of not adopting the new section are that liabilities and expenditures could be understated and accumulated surplus could be overstated. The amounts, if any, are not known at this time. So uh, just I, before I move on, I just kind of want to build on that a little bit. There was a new handbook section that we did need to adopt um, a couple years ago, uh, and unfortunately, the information has been made it's been made available or collected in order to do that. So, with the exception of that one point, it was a clean auditor's report. So I'm just going to go through from here and, and highlight a couple of um, important points that go into an audit and 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 our auditor's report. Um, so we have conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted account uh, auditing standards and we believe that the, uh, the evidence that we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our qualified opinion. Management is responsible for the presentation, preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements in accordance with Canadian accounting standards for public sector and for such internal controls management deems necessary to enable able the preparation of the financial statements that are free from material misstatement. Uh, those charged with governance uh, are responsible for overseeing the municip municipality financial reporting process and independent auditors report to mayor and council of the district of Chetwin. Our objective is to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error and to issue our auditor's report that indicates our opinion. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but is not guaranteed that the audit conducted in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. We also identify and assess the risk of a material misstatement of the financial statements, whether due to fraud or error, design and perform audit procedures 
responsive to those risks and obtain audit evidence that is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. We obtain an understanding of the internal controls relevant to the audit in order to design audit procedures that are appropriate in the circumstances, um, but not for expressing an opinion on the effectiveness of the internal controls. We evaluate the appropriateness of the accounting policies used and the reasonableness of the accounting estimates and related disclosures made by management. And we conclude on the appropriateness of management's use of a going concern basis of accounting and base our audit evidence obtained. Um, and then we uh, evaluate the overall presentation structure and content of the financial statements, including the disclosures um, and whether the financial statements present, present the underlying transactions and events in a manner that achieves the fair presentation. So that's all the stuff that we did in, in um, kind of forming our opinion that I started with. So um, beyond that, uh, we have our financial statements, which carry on to uh, 15 pages more. Um, I can just highlight a couple of, uh, of high level things. Um, you know, the financial assets of the District of Chetwin at the end of December 31st, 2021 were at $13.2 million and there was $5.2 million of, of financial liabilities uh, and that is down from the prior year. So as a result, um, the net financial assets have increased uh, from six point, just about $6.5 million in 2020 to just short of $8 million in 2021. So those are all really positives. Uh, you know, we've had a very challenging uh, couple of years uh, managing uh, fiscal responsibility and 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 finances, um, and that was both on you know, re your primary revenue collection, which is property taxes, um, keeping our economies going, and 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 still providing those services that were under high demand over that time period. So I congratulate you all for for a job well done. So. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else that I'd like to highlight. I can pass it to Kevin if he's got anything he wants to add. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. Just before you go there, Kevin, uh, on a public note, uh, we'd just like to thank our financial officer before he continues. Uh, it's important for us that we have a financial officer that uh, will hold to the high standards, and that's great uh, for Chapman and uh, Mayor and Council for sure to us on that uh, level. Okay, well, if, if that's everything, um, and unless there's any other questions, um, I guess, you know, I can, I, I can comment a little bit on, on, on uh, your, or build a little bit on your comments, which is that's the important thing, the important reason why, why a number of years ago we reformatted the presentation of financial statements for public sector, and that is to highlight that. Um, if we continue on past that, uh, $8 million line, you start to see the uh, infrastructure uh, value that's being carried on the books, the net carrying value, uh, and, the, and the recognition of, of depreciation. 
um, which is to highlight that use of that infrastructure and so that we don't forget that, that uh, there are, are future demands that we need to account for. I don't have any specific comments, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Any other comments or uh, questions for Alan or Kevin? Okay, except we need a motion to accept the manager's statement. Is that what we're doing, Kevin? Yes, please. Councillor Bezendowski makes that motion. Uh, Councillor Deck uh, seconds. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Committee reports and liaisons. I have I have one from the Peace River Regional uh, District. We the Peace River uh, Regional District just went through uh, uh, safety cultural training with Magua uh, Energy Clan or Magua Clan Energy. Uh, they've uh, their uh, system of uh, their training between business and indigenous people. So uh, we did one with the PRRD. So it would be Stuart Cameron. He's the lead in that uh, plan. So it was uh, very interesting. We did our own, uh, the Peace River District, uh, the directors and the chair did their own planning and they gave us uh, insight and led on uh, led the direction and where we are to end up. So we finished uh, the plan, I believe, last month, and we're going to implement it, I believe, as uh, soon as the plan comes together and is in front of us again. So this is one of the things that, uh, as for a council and mayor, that uh, we would uh, maybe go in that direction in the future. Uh, so is there any questions on this? Because. Uh, we, we probably could uh, contact uh, Stuart Cameron. He's a former chief of uh, Soto, and uh, he's uh, started, he's worked in the industry for about 40 years, I believe. Sorry, what was the planning for? Safety cultural training between uh, indigenous groups and uh, businesses. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I would like to see something like that uh, take place here with mayor and council if that's a possibility. Uh, yes, and we have one more that uh, contacted us. So uh, myself and uh, CAO will be uh, looking at that. And uh, once uh, we uh, figure out dates to for them to contact us, we will uh, give it out to council and uh, I guess poll the council on where we could meet uh, to with these and see what kind of uh, information they're going to give us. So that that's. Uh, two that we have, so the, uh, just look look in the mail, making sure that uh, we have the two of them available to come for a meeting, and uh, give, then, then we'll give direction and what, what meeting, meeting times they'll give us. Uh, and uh, May, uh, May, May was kind of a busy month, and uh, starting April, I guess I should have add, added April in there because we started meeting uh, in person in conferences, we were at a meeting in uh, Richmond with myself and Council Wark, and uh, then we went into May, and May was uh, the one the NCGLA in Fort St. John was uh, was very interesting. Again, everything, all the themes that uh, we were, at, all these conferences were to do with uh, meeting with Indigenous uh, uh, peoples, uh, Treaty Eight, Soto, uh, Dunaze. Uh, Doig, uh, Beaver Indians, and uh, Halfway, all these reserves that are in our uh, Treaty 8 
they were uh, pretty prevalent on uh, how and uh, when we should meet. So that's why I started out with uh, with the report on uh, safety training, cultural safety training. Uh, so I was down in Doig uh, at Doig Days, and uh, what they had there was uh, they had a moose hide that they were scraping, getting ready uh, to uh, prepare for tanning. They were uh, skinning a beaver. There was 17-year-olds, uh, 18-year-olds, and in that uh, age range, they were skinning a beaver. And uh, what was uh, got me was uh, that school district 60 brought all grade fours to Doig Days. So I was uh, pretty impressed with that. And they were throughout uh, the cultural grounds at Doig. So they witnessed uh, the skinning of the beaver, the scraping of the hide, the, uh, and uh, we had uh, Bannock uh, on a stick. They gave us this dough, myself included in this. They gave us all this uh, stick. We uh, roasted our, uh, our Bannock on a, on a stick and they got to do that, watch the dry meat being dried and prepared. And uh, it was all, all something that was important to the area for school district 60. So they did this very well at Dwight. And so I questioned them, did you just invite uh, school district 50, uh, school district 60 grade fours? He said, yes, this year we invited them all, but they were invited. It all started, Doig Day started for children. It was for the kids. So right from the start, it was for the children and they, they just bumped it up and said, we're inviting all grade fours. So uh, uh, one, one of the stories went, the, uh, the young fellas were skinning the beaver and uh, that we heard this young, young lady go and says, what about the teeth? Because they were explaining we, what we do with the hide, we're going to do this, we'll stretch it out. They had a beaver felt uh, being stretched out uh, on a different uh, rack. He says, what about those teeth? And the, the skinner, the young fella stops and says, oh yeah, no, no, we, uh, what he called, says, yeah, we'll take it apart because they were using different parts of the body. And uh, the little girl, she wanted to know what they were going to do with the teeth. That was her question, not what about the teeth. It was, what are you going to do with the teeth? And it says, no, no, we don't do anything with the teeth because on a beaver, they're fairly long, right? So, and so this is uh, what children bring to a place. They bring those kind of questions. And if you get questions, it's because their mind is always functioning and going. So anyway, I thought that was a pr pretty nice thing. So anyway, with Doig Days, uh, and after lunch, we went to the pavilion. They have a small pavilion there, and uh, I don't know if we, you've seen one in uh, the Williams Lake uh, Pavilion, where it's, it's huge, right? And the dancing, uh, they had dances inside there. They had the sacred fire going in the middle of uh, this pavilion. It was fairly small. It wasn't a huge one. It probably hold about, uh, I'd say about 200 people. And so it was full with all kids, and then whatever adults could squeeze in. So uh, they had the dance there, and uh, the 83-year-old May, uh, they call her Grandma May, she had her uh, buckskin uh, uh, dress on. So she was there, and she had the prayer, and then they had the drummers, and then they had the dance around the, on the sacred fire. So all these things are in our area, and uh, I went to the FCM, and uh, one of the things that came out of the FCM was uh, the housing, the prime minister. Uh, it's called the Accelerating Housing Fund. He talked about that. 70, approximately $70 billion is uh, going to be alloc allocated to this fund. And that's to help communities. When, uh, when we say communities, he meant the FCM community. So that meant us as a community as to help in developing housing in your community. So. Hopefully, they talked about this four years ago at FCM about housing and uh, the need for, uh, for funds for housing, but uh, the Prime Minister talked in length about that. So it was very interesting to know that uh, it's still there. And then the NDP leader, Singh, he talked the next day, and he talked about the exact same thing. So it's both on their plates, and uh, hopefully it comes through in the next year or two Hopefully, we're thinking uh, 2023, 
and uh, they get it on their budget so that uh, it'll show up here next year and we'll be able to uh, apply for, for those funds. I, I was just, are you, are you talking low income housing or is that how contractors can, contractors to build houses? So we, <clears throat> the question, uh, question was that there, is it for every community? And when they put the every and when the question was asked later, it says it is for throughout every community. So when you go to every community, they meant the high level to the low income. So it was something that we'd have to look at when, once they uh, bring out that uh, fund to uh, be distributed. So that, that was quite exciting. And uh, there too, I, I attended a powwow at uh, 6.30 and I went to, uh, it's the Brandt Center and you walk to uh, the Pedway and you stayed right in that same area and you walk there and, uh, and the powwow uh, that was on there, I, I will uh, send around to council and to our, uh, to our uh, website on the grand entrance. I mean, if anybody hasn't been to a powwow, I mean, the grand entrance is one of the things that uh, we should all, all see in our lifetime because it's quite, quite a sight to see and the dancing that goes on and they all come on the floor. They all come out into the grass, wherever it's held, either at a pavilion and all in the center and in this case, it was at the Brand Center. It was a hockey rink. They all came in. They made the circle from, and they all ended up. Uh, the mayor of, uh, of uh, Regina was there. So they had all the dignitaries. So anyway, this, this was something that was uh, quite profound for myself as an indigenous person to see this. I hadn't seen the grand entrance that huge before. I seen a few, but not nothing like this one because they had people, had that dancers on North, uh, North America, right? Uh, they had five states uh, represented. They had nine drumming uh, drummers. That meant there was uh, five or six in each uh, drum base. So they had nine of them in the in the arena. So it was quite uh, quite nice. So that was uh, that was the FCM, and that was the biggest thing that I got out of it. Uh, Prime Minister was not there, so he got a little bit of a uh, you know raspberry because he wasn't there, but. Uh, uh, NDP leader uh, Singh was there, and uh, so was Andrew Shear. That he came to talk to uh, to the delegation, which was very nice of them. Uh, but uh, that's what I got out of it. Hopefully, that's what we need here in Shetland is the housing development that we uh, we need uh, just about in every community. But here, as uh, as council and mayor, we we see this, we hear this, and so does staff. So uh, that was one of the big highlights of uh, the FCM. I, and that would be it for me. Uh, I guess the proclamation, right, that we had for uh, the moose hide, that, that was uh, another big one that we did here in Chatham, and uh, we discussed that, should, we, should that be part of our, so we had to get confirmation from them that they were a society, or, and we did that, and the moose hide, uh, it's four men, abuse of women so we recognize that as a man i recognize that and give that blue side that we wear to to the men say this is what this is for that's the significance of the blue side campaign so when you do hear about it google it uh, we have uh, have cards that tell us what it what it does and i could read it for you today but i want you to Get out there and read it for yourselves. Grab this uh, uh, information and go and read it. So anyway, that that was an important proclamation, I believe, in uh, in Chatham here that we did here as council and as uh, mayor. So uh, with that, I will conclude. And uh, is there any other uh, liaisons? I just have a very brief report. Um, so June fourteenth, uh, I attended the NCLGA twenty. 23 AGM um, and convention planning meeting. Um, it was zipped via Zoom. We just went over our thing, uh, draft uh, planning timeline. They introduced the event coordinator and consultant for the event. And um, they selected Lindsay Bork, who's 
done the job in the past and is very good at what she does. So we're happy to have her on board. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be meeting again uh, to work on our branding and just to brainstorm some uh, theme ideas and what tours we would like to see throughout the throughout the region. So, and then um, June 14th, or I'm sorry, that was 14th, June 17th, I had my Northeast Regional Advisory Committee, uh, the NDIT, presented their. 2021 annual report and they also presented the 2021 state of the north report which was super interesting and it's um it's on it's uploaded onto their website now and i would recommend that everybody go have a look at it it it, it, it i guess the most fascinating thing to me was the increase in housing throughout our different jurisdictions across the north and uh they some are in the double digits and some are in the minus double digits, depending on where you're at and what the economy is doing, which they also listed the economic uh, growth and impact in, in the province. And um, then we had a few applications from the new, um, I'll try not to mess this up. Uh, the project applications were under the new PRD Agricultural Compensation Fund. And so it was really exciting to talk about these initiatives that are I can't tell you what they were, um, but they will be announcing it soon once they let the applicants know. And uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting. So, and that is the end of my report. I move my report. Thank you. Any other? And don't worry about messing up. The mayor messes up quite a bit sometimes. Okay. Carry on. Your worship. Yes. Could, uh, could adoption? We, oh, could we please have uh, <laughs> motions to adopt uh, okay. those two reports? Yes. So, okay. Okay. Councillor Bezendowski makes that motion. Councillor Galbraith second. All those in favor? Okay. Discussion items. Yeah, well, correspondence. Information items. We've got one, two, six. Anything to be pulled out? Councilor Bazadowski makes motion. And Councilor Deck, second. To receive. All those in favor? Okay. Reports for action. <coughs> RA1, is that where we're on? Or Carol, for this, uh, do we need the public uh, Opportunity at the beginning? Yes, please. Everly, Everly Development Variance Permit Number 0 2022. The, develop, uh, the public comment period. This portion of the regular council meeting is set aside to allow for public comments on the application from Barry Eberly for a development various permit to allow locating a mobile home older than 10 years on the property located at 5289 44th Street Southeast. This is not a formal public hearing process, but rather an informal process. I will, however, ask each person who wishes to speak to state their name and resident, resident or business address and then provide counsel with their comments. I will, ask, I will now ask if there is any comments from the public on the application for, from Barry Everly for the development variance permit at 5289 44th Street Southeast.
Do I need to read it more than one more time if there's nobody there? Okay. Hearing, hearing no further comments, I declare, declare this public proceedings concluded. Okay, continue to RA1. Make a recommendation that council of the district of Chetland authorize issuance of development variance permit number 01 2022 to Barry Everly to allow locating a mobile home older than 10 years old on the property located at lot 67 district lot 42 PRD plan 24479 5289 44th street southeast Chetland BC Councillor Bazadowski seconds. Any discussion? Sorry, we were going to look into further adjusting this. Uh, is there going is there been any? When are we going to be doing that? Yes, that's correct. So I spoke with the consultant who's helping us with, um, to create the new zoning bylaw, and so they're doing some research on other communities that have implemented that relaxation in the in the in the age of the mobile homes and so they'll be bringing that forward to council so any more discussion all those in favor carry ra2 Councillor uh, Bezendowski, I'm going to have to uh, read the statement for the annual public comment period prior to your uh, motion. Uh, this portion of our regular council meeting is set aside to allow for public comments on the 2022 annual report. This is not a formal public he hearing process, but rather an informal process. I will, however, ask each person who wishes to speak to state their name and resident, uh, residential or business address and then provide counsel with their comments. I will now ask if there are any comments from the public on the 2022 annual report. Hearing no further comments, I declare this public proceedings concluded. Councillor Bazandowski. I'll recommend that council adopt the 2022 annual report for the district of Chetland as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carry. R A. Oh, okay. We're going into R A three solid waste collection. Second. Awesome. Discussion? Councillor? I guess I have a question. Um, um, everything I've read through, um, I don't think it's a bad idea of giving this to the company to look after. Um, I think in the long run it's going to save us money as opposed to the, my only concern would be the lack of service, or I'm uh, not lack of service, that's the wrong word. The service that they will get if our, we're not involved in it. Because the way we do it now, we're kind of the middle person. Um, because I know I looked after this when I worked at AIM, I looked after the solid waste, and it was 
it was a nightmare for both of us because when somebody wanted something, they would have they phone us. We'd say, "No, you got to phone the district." Then the district would phone us, and then we'd change it. And it, it just it, being the middle person was really tough. So I think it going to a private company to look after and do and work completely out of it is not a bad idea. It's just um, I think we need. I don't know if we talked to the company. Have we talked to JFL about this possibly happening? Do we know? Not directly as of yet. Um, they they did see the the survey that went out the same as the other people, so they were aware of it and all that. So. And with the uh, and with the um, um, cost, like I, I'd like to see a, a little better segregation of the cost for the um, commercial and um, residential and and just see where we're sitting and whether there's been any um, fines levied in, in regards to uh, contaminated uh, contaminated um, dumpsters I guess for better words and then and then uh, have another look at this uh, and like Laura said um, and do a little bit more of a study on it and I, I was one of the ones that was and quite in agreement with it. I might even have brought it up, but I'd like to see a little better, a little better segregation of the, the costs and everything. Yeah, the problem we've got with that is our contract is a single unit contract for both residential and commercial, and there's like, other than running a, a series of estimates on best guesses, we don't have any way to differentiate what portion is for what and what portion is for the other part. So it makes it very difficult to, to give an exact cost for the commercial side versus the residential because there is no breakdown of it within the contract itself. Well, in, a, in this contract expires at the end of the calendar year, so we're going to have to deal with it one way or the other. Uh, any future contract going forward, I would hope that we would do something that way. Uh, with the current contract, if we were to try and implement a, a major recycling program, there's no ability to reduce our garbage collection costs, even though in theory it would be half if you went to every second week. So like there's some of those things I think we need to deal with as far, you know, to deal with the, the changing environment out there these days. So um, yeah, there should be some differentiation between the residential and the commercial as well within the contract. And right now there just isn't, so. Okay, uh, I believe I didn't uh, really get a the answer what uh, Councillor uh, Weisgruber has asked. Like I, I, I don't get what she might have to ask the, the question again because I'm not getting this. What I heard, she's asking, we lose control of our residents and uh, the GFL on how they're doing their business in our community. And is it good for the community or is it good for GFL? Are they gonna, is the service going to be there? I would anticipate that it should actually be better because the companies can tailor to the individual customer whatever they want, however they want to do it, whatever they agree with the customer, they can tailor that. For them to use the district and go through as a middleman, it, I mean, we've got the bylaw we have to change, which is just, you know, it just creates regulatory problems. And it's very difficult for us to try to customize a service for an individual business. For GFL or any other private contractor to deal with another private business is between the two of them and they can deal with it however they want. So they've got a lot more flexibility, I believe. Um, and they should be able to, you know, to work it out accordingly. Now the companies will have some policies and it's not going to be perfect for everybody because it never perfect for everybody, but it would, 
in in my view, I think it would be easier for both the the company and for the the commercial customers. It would be better. And I, I agree, Kevin. I, I really do think it's better for the. I think it'll work better for the businesses if they just deal directly with GFL. Um, uh, the only, like, my only concern is that GFL will say, well, we're not going to do commercial business anymore. That's my only concern. So that's why I just wondered if you talk to GFL about this could be like, like high level conversation about, I know they do it in other communities. They do commercial and um, I know in Dawson, the customers phone and book their own garbage bins and they do all that on their own with the company. The town has nothing to do with it, right? And that's kind of the way I think we should probably lean just to not be that middleman in the person or in the the person in the middle but yeah and that's what we're proposing uh but no we have not had any direct conversations with gfl because we're still i guess trying to get direction from council as to whether or not this is the direction you want us to pursue so more thing and and as far as being able to differentiate between the commercial and the personal the only way you could probably do it is by the different trucks that dump dump the garbage because it's sidearm dumps the residential where your your front load dumps so when they dump them at the garbage van or the garbage up there they could maybe you could look at the tipping slips and it tell you which vehicle dumped it so you, that way you would know which if it was commercial or if it was residential, but that's a huge undertaking. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Any more questions? Okay. All those in favor? Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Council. Well, we have to go on the recommendation that was read right now, I right? That. So that that's uh, received, right? Uh, that was it. That, that that's what was read, right, Carol? If that's the motion that's on the floor right now, yeah. So just con confirm if we wanted to go to the businesses and the collection GFL um, working together themselves, we'd have to defeat this motion and. Put another motion on the floor. Um, alternatively, you could vote on the motion, and then somebody could introduce a new motion to ask staff to take further direction. Good with uh, council. Just vote on the motion, and then uh, create another uh, recommendation. All those in favor. Again, all those in favor? Two? Okay. Defeated? Okay. Are we making another motion for direction, right? Is that what uh, the question was? Yes. Yeah, we defeated that uh, the report titled Solid Waste Collection be received. Or, and now we're into or. Okay. Let's uh, wait for a discussion. If you're going to make the motion, let's make a motion and then we'll discuss it. Okay, sorry. So I'll make that motion that I don't know when I'll make <laughs> that counts that we have high level talks with GFL. We'll, we'll have uh, CCA will be back and have correct directions. We'll have CO and then she'll. Okay, we'll, we'll get it right. So moved by Councillor Weisgerber that administration contact GFL um, for high level discussions regarding um, the future of commercial service in, in Chapman. 
Okay, I will need a second. Councillor Bazandowski seconds. Okay, discussion. Councillor Weisberg. So I guess, guess my question is, or, or can, question is, if they don't fulfill their contract and they do give up the service, then we put it out for tender for somebody else, correct? It's as simple as that. So it's not like it's the end, the end of the world if they leave town, basically, right? Yes, I think she's asking right at the start, they're not gonna pull out their right commercial. But if they do, then we can put it out for tender to find a commercial. Correct. So they are still under contract for the rest of 2022. Perfect. So this would be kind of an abstract discussion, yeah. sort of in theory, because we will have to put it out for tender at the end of, you know, before the new right. year. say that it makes sense to have those discussions before we uh, discontinue uh, or before we, we let them know um, it, before the second motion, really. <laughs> That's all, just a comment. So uh, the whole um, solid waste goes up for tender? Uh, residential and commercial that's what's going up this year well the entire contract will be will be expiring at the end of this year so whether we put it in separate components or as one it will need to go out for tender unless did you have another comment on that no okay thank you any more discussion How long is that okay The current one was five years and then it was renewed for a further five years. Any more discussion? Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, I just have one question. Do you want to limit this conversation to the current contractor or there are a couple of other contractors I have seen around town, so. I think at this, personally, I think at this time you limit it to that contractor just because of the initial, because it is going up for bid at the end of the year. So all of them companies have the option to bid on it, but they have it right now, right? So that, that might be my opinion. So uh, we wouldn't be uh, going under violating any of the terms of the contract if we do talk to another company? Does that look like we're biased either way? Well, my intention would not be to do anything more than find out whether or not there were multiple companies interested in providing this service to our commercial customers. It certainly wouldn't, I mean, they would be dealing with the commercial customers directly come January anyway, so under this proposal. So it wouldn't, we wouldn't be involved, so we're not, you know, causing any problem that way, so. I would make the motion uh, that report titled Gover Local Government Climate Action Program be received for information. Second. Do we discuss that or is it just information? Carol? Um, all we asked for was to be received for information, but you can certainly discuss it. Any questions or anything? Any discussion? Okay. 
All those in favor? Okay. New business. New business, none. Public uh, questions? <laughs> yeah, she put her hand up. <laughs> okay. Not hearing any. Adjournment. Any discussion? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Council. <laughs>